Let's learn how to use three most important resampling techniques train test split, cross validation, and bootstrapping. We'll start with the question why do we actually need resampling? The short answer is resampling allows to create a useful model which helps to confidently answer any question with data. For example, if we want to know which cars are more efficient, American, European, or Japanese, we could take all 392 cars from Auto Dataset and model miles per gallon for all three origins. Plotting predictions reveals that American cars are the least efficient, while Japanese cars are the most efficient. However, we can't fully trust those predictions yet, because predictions which are based on the whole dataset can only reflect what the model already knows. While if our model is somehow biased, overfitted, or the model assumptions are violated, our predictions might be just wrong. So, we need to somehow test the quality of those predictions. One way to validate our model is to split our data into two distinct datasets, the training set and the test set. That would allow you to develop and optimize the model with training dataset and use test dataset to determine the efficiency of your model. The function initial split from resample package splits data for you. You just give it the name of your dataset and the proportion you want to allocate into the training set. 80% is usually a good choice. The initial split function then uses random sampling to get 80% of your data and if you need those 80% to be reproducible, use set seed function with the number of your choice before splitting. After the initial split, the training and testing functions return the actual data sets. Such simple random sampling is often good enough, but when some groups of a categorical variable are much more common than others, a simple random sample may accidentally misrepresent proportions of those groups in the training or test set. For example, 17% of our cars are European, while 20% are Japanese. So we have 3% more Japanese cars as compared with European. But when we look at the testing set, we'll see 6% less Japanese cars as compared with European cars, which is the opposite of what's true. To avoid this, we can use strata argument to conduct stratified random sampling, where splitting into 80 and 20% is conducted separately within each group. And then the subsamples are combined into the overall training and test sets. In this way, the proportions inside of groups will be kept similar to the original data. But what if an important variable is not categorical but numeric? In this case, we need to keep a distribution similar between the training and test sets. Because otherwise, if the distribution of an important variable is skewed, simple random resampling may accidentally skew your data even further. We don't want that. Fortunately, numeric data can also be easily stratified. The initial split function does it by artificially cutting numeric data into four quartiles and then uses stratified sampling for separate quartiles. For example, when we don't stratify horsepower of cars, <coughs> sorry, the distribution of a training set is similar to the original distribution, while the test set differs in several locations. But if we stratify for horsepower, the distribution of a training set almost overlaps with the original set, and the distribution of a test set gets much more similar to the original data. By default, resample will cut continuous variables into four parts, but we can increase the number of parts using the breaks argument in order to make distributions of training and test set even more similar to the original data. And since there is no downside to using stratified sampling, I would always stratified sampling by the most important variable. Here is an example of the linear regression which models miles per gallon of cars with their origin and horsepower. Important here is to see that we fit the model only with training data and then use this model to predict the MPG in the test data. We'll take only coefficient of determination R squared as prediction quality indicator. I say only because there are many more if you need other metrics. 
But for now, the R squared of 0.68 means that our model explains 68% of variation in the test data. If this code seems confusing, don't sweat it. It is not important right now for this topic. It just helps to learn about resampling. What is important though is to differentiate the goodness of predictions from the goodness of fit. The goodness of predictions, which is the R squared we just got after using the test data, is a realistic estimate of model performance. Because it was tested on the data our model have never seen. While the goodness of fit, which is the R squared we get when we fit our model to the whole auto dataset, will always result in an artificially optimistic and therefore unrealistic estimate of performance. The performance is unrealistic because some models are so good that they almost remember the data by heart, with all the noise and contaminations data contains. And this phenomenon is called overfitting. And overfitted models are bad because the noise our model have learned will result in the great predictions on the training data and bad predictions on the test data. So, we need to split the data in order to be able to properly evaluate model performance. But this produces another problem. How do we know whether the model we just trained is good? If we log transform the data or add another predictor, we might be able to improve the goodness of predictions. Therefore, we need to understand the performance of a model before using the test set. And since it's crucial to use the test set only once at the end of model building, we need a second small data set in order to compare different models we train. This second small data set is similar to the test set, but in order to avoid confusion, it was called validation set. Here's how it works. We can take our training set, which is 80% of the original data, and put, let's say, 20% of it into a validation set. The 60% of the original data will be then used for analysis. This validation set allows to stop the training when the validation error rate begins to rise. But I'm not giving you any code examples yet, because there is a much better way to use validation set. And this better way is cross-validation, which is one of the most popular resampling techniques. The working principle is very simple. Instead of cutting off 20% of the data from the training set as one validation set, we split the whole training set into, let's say, four validation sets, often called faults, of 20% each. We then use each validation set to evaluate the model analyzed with the remaining 60% of the data. This produces four validations, and when we take the average of them, we'll get a much better idea about the quality of our model as compared to only one validation set. Such resampling uncovers how well our model works before using the test set. Programming cross-validation in tidy models is incredibly easy. We'll use the vFaultCV function on the training set and tell it how many faults do we want. Again, Every validation set is similar to the test set, but was called a validation set to avoid confusion. And to avoid confusion between simple validation and cross-validation, every fault which is used for validation was called the assessment set, while remaining faults were united to the analysis set. So, for every of the four faults, we'll beat the model with the analysis set, and then apply this model on the assessment set to estimate model performance. We then calculate the average performance statistics of four models. Here's how it works. We first set up a model. We then create a workflow, add the model and the formula to it. We then use Fitra samples function to fit our four models. By the way, Fitra samples function is similar to fit function we used before. But instead of having a data argument where we put a training set, Fitra samples has a resamples argument where we put the faults object which contains our four resamples. We'll then use collect metrics function to get the average performance of our four fitted and validated models. And we are done. But if we want to see performance of all four separate models, we'll specify summarize false argument inside of collect metrics. But while four faults are great for explaining cross-validation, 
are four faults enough to get a reliable mean performance metrics? Well, interestingly, the 10-fold cross-validation proved to deliver the best results and thus became the default in the vfault cv function. So that, when we don't specify argument v, your training set will be automatically split into 10 splits. And while 10-fold cross-validation is cool enough, it has one little downside. Namely, it might produce slightly noisy or high variance estimates. To reduce such noisy variance, we can perform repeated cross-validation, which simply means running the 10-fold cross-validation multiple times. For that, we can use the repeats argument inside of vfault cv function. Here, the default and therefore not specified 10-fold cross-validation will be performed 10 times, which results in 100 models with 100 performance metrics, and therefore a less noisy average performance. This plot shows how quickly the standard error decreases with replicates. And since we just use regression model, let's try out repeated cross-validation on a classification model. For that, we'll use a random forest algorithm with 1000 trees from the Ranger package and classify car origins with the help of MPG and horsepower. The accuracy of 75% and the area under the curve of 80% for such a small data set of only 313 observations is pretty good. And while Resample package has tons of other useful techniques like leaf one out cross validation, Monte Carlo cross validation, time dependent or grouped resampling, and many more, let's go to our last primary resampling technique bootstrap resampling. The bootstrap resampling is like cross validation on steroids. A bootstrap sample is a sample taken from the training set and having the same size as the training set. The same size arises via replacements, where a particular observation might be sampled multiple times. Each observation has a 63% chance of being sampled at least once, so that 37% of the training set will not be selected for the analysis set and will therefore become the assessment set. But as cool as bootstrap resampling is, similarly to cross-validation, it also has a little downside. And while a little downside of cross-validation is high variance, a little downside of bootstrap resampling is low variance, which might result in slightly pessimistic estimates of model performance. For example, if model accuracy with all data is 80%, the bootstrap resampling would show the accuracy to be below 80%. However, this decrease in accuracy is usually really small, and I personally prefer my estimates to be rather conservative and realistic, as opposed to overly optimistic, in order to avoid false positive results. So, I think slightly conservative estimates can also be seen as a small advantage of bootstrap. But the most decisive advantage of bootstrapping compared to cross-validation is that bootstrapping not only checks model performance, but can also deliver robust estimates of model parameters with 50, 95 or any other confidence intervals. Moreover, bootstrapping is one of the best non-parametric modeling techniques, with four solid reasons of why bootstrap model is better than usual model. So, knowing bootstrapping will definitely make you a better data scientist, and if you want to know how to bootstrap models in R in the next 10 minutes, check out this video.